Welcome to the Jaron Jarvis channel. I am Jaron Jarvis. Today, I would like to introduce to you, if you find a phone by a cemetery, leave it alone. This all happened this evening, so suddenly it doesn't feel real. Last night, I went to visit a friend I hadn't seen in a long time. We didn't have much of a set plan as to what we wanted to do, all we knew was that we wanted to enjoy each other's company. My friend, who for anonymity we'll call Courtney, just got her license. So, since neither of us ever went out late, as Courtney's typical internal clock sent her to bed at 10 p.m., we decided to spend the evening driving around to the outskirts of our town and back. Our escapades of driving around and laughing to the blaring sound of music, however, became more interesting when I recommended we go to our local cemetery. I wasn't trying to make the evening scary, I swear. Being a goth kid that never grew out of their phase, I've always had an affinity for cemeteries. I love visiting graves that haven't had attention in a while. Bringing flowers to the headstones that are cracked, long forgotten by their kin, brings me a sense of peace. As we drove around to find the entrance, something caught my eye. Wait, Courtney, I said, rolling down my window. I see something on the road. The familiar shape of a phone called out from the edge of the road leading to the cemetery's entrance. At first, it just looked like a case someone had broken and thrown out their window. However, as Courtney reversed to find it, and as I reached out to pick it up, we found that it was, in face, someone's cell phone. That's so weird Courtney said hesitantly. She's the better behaved out of the two of us. Where I picked up bad habits along the way of growing up, Courtney stayed the fun-loving friend who didn't try to push many boundaries. This, though. This was a boundary crossed. Maybe we should put it back. I looked at her, confused. Why would we do that? I pushed down the power button, and felt it vibrate in my hand. It still works. The screen is just fucked up. Courtney shot me a look of concern before putting the car in drive. It was dark, and there was no way she was staying there to investigate. Looking back, I wish with all of my heart that I would have left it where it was. When we got home, we went on into the night like normal. Pizza, some gossip, some henna tattoos and laughter, the phone had nearly been forgotten. Nearly. Hey girls. Her mom yelled from the living room. Come turn this phone off so it'll stop ringing. We looked at each other, wide-eyed. I pulled my phone out. Silent mode, just like always. Courtney took hers out. Silent. But as we listened, we heard it start again. The ringing. The phone was ringing. We ran into the living room to pick it up. Courtney was visibly shaking as I picked it up. Though the screen was dark, I could feel the vibrations of me pushing on the keys. I swiped up, hoping it would answer the call. Hello? I asked timidly. I'm not normally one to be spooked by things. I've had my fair share of the paranormal, so I'm pretty seasoned on what to expect. What met my call was breathing. A steady inhale, exhale, followed by a large inhale through the nose. It was almost rhythmic. I clicked around until the call ended, and put the phone down. Right as I did so, I heard the sound of someone snapping their fingers. At this point, Courtney wanted nothing to do with this entire situation. This is so fucking creepy, Blair, why the hell did you pick up? She asked. Her blue eyes were sheened over with worry. I figured it was the owner I said, shrugging. The night moved forward slower after that. I felt the difference in the air. Everyone was uneasy after that encounter. I kept glancing at the clock, almost hoping time passing faster would make things less scary. However, as I looked, I couldn't help but feel the time ticked by slower. A few more hours into the night, we were on her porch. I was having a cigarette, while Courtney came to talk, as she doesn't smoke. We were talking about her new boyfriend, when suddenly, the sound came again. That fucking phone. It was ringing. I ran inside, angry. Why the fuck does someone keep calling? What do they want? Is it their phone? Why don't they say that? Hello? I yelled, swiping onto the dark screen. Courtney stayed on the porch, looking in from behind the screens. What do you want? I heard the same reply from earlier. 
the breathing, the exhale, the sniff, over and over again. By this point, I was pissed. Sounds like you need a fucking inhaler buddy. What do you want? I wish so badly that I would have kept my mouth shut. A small giggle sounded from the phone. It was so faint that I almost didn't hear it. Had the house not been silent, it would have been completely lost. But then, it began to crescendo. The laugh became louder, and louder, until it sounded as if this person's maniacal cackle was being played over speakers in the house. I began tapping furiously on the phone trying to end the call. However, once again, as I hit the button, I heard the sound. Fingers snapping. Twice. I ended the call, throwing the phone across the room. Courtney jumped back as the small Motorola hit the wall. It shattered, the screen falling off in certain areas. The back broke off, with the battery poking out. Takes care of that nonsense I said, wiping my sweaty palms on my shirt. But it didn't. No. No it didn't. As I type this, something has happened. The phone, every hour now, on the 16th minute, rings. I've tried everything. I've hammered it, I've thrown it at a tree, I've put it in the bathtub. The screen is no longer usable. It stays of turning on and off are long over. But it just. Keeps. Ringing. I can't even answer it, but when it calls, it picks itself up. The breathing starts up. At this point, I've just learned to weep silently. Any sound sets off the laughter again. But something weirder has happened. Every time the person, or rather, whatever the hell is at the end of the call, snaps their fingers, it increases. It's been five hours, and we're up to seven snaps. I'm almost afraid of what will happen when he reaches ten. Courtney is long gone, mentally. From crying, to anger, to a sort of feeble acceptance, she's now sitting in the corner of her room, covered up by her comforter. I can hear it ringing again, but I'm afraid to hear the answer. Time feels as if it's warped. When I heard the last snapping, I swear I saw the clock's hands move back slightly. It was just slight enough that it didn't make much of a difference, but I swear on my life, after the, now eight, calls, the clock has set back almost a half an hour. I don't understand any of this. I'm tired. And the fucking phone is ringing again.